in Bitcoin general. doesn't care yeah. what you think of it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. And All right, let's get okay. right into it. Oh, hey guys, welcome back to your future handle Pigs and Bogs. I'm Marty Boggs. And I'm Julian Biggs. And we got Spencer on sound and screens. Spencer. Thanks for joining us today, folks. We'd like to come at you about once a week or so and talk about some things that De we believe will benefit your future hand. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Smash that like button. Oh. And... What are we up to today and how can we plan for tomorrow? Julian. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. Yeah, today we're going to get into a market scope, of course, but we got a few other things to talk about. We're going to talk about cognitive dissonance again after a conversation that I had, you know, just this skepticism around Bitcoin and everything else going on. So we're going to clear some of that up. But as always, a market scope here first. Ooh, market scope. Market scope. Okay, so we are looking at the Bitcoin versus US dollar chart on the daily time frame, of course, and nothing major is happening. We are still in this range floating around and just kind of in the middle again here, but on the lower side at the time of the uh, episode last week, we were at 16.6 and at the time of filming this video, we are at Oh, 16,561. We're still in the same spot. Oh, so yeah. So, spot. I mean, same spot. We're still just trading sideways here. We didn't think anything major was going to happen. There was, uh, you know, some hype in the market. <clears throat> And even like one of the biggest players on YouTube, man, like he just, he flip flops a lot and says he's got all the calls. But I know when we were sitting at like 20K, just over 20K, almost 21K, he had 60% of his funds into, into the market already. So, I mean, like a lot of the hype in YouTube, I'm starting to see that a lot of that is like, it's just hype. It's people scraping the barrel for content. So, yeah, well, I they're, mean, they're, if it's boring, we're going to tell you it's boring here and it's yeah, boring. We're trading yeah. sideways. They're trying to put out videos every day. They rely on it as an yeah. income source and that sort of stuff. So yeah, when nothing's going on, they got to make something up. That's just fair. like, that's actually reminds me of but something. Just if like we start your, doing your local to, news does the we, same thing. Yeah. They got to put out content every day. If we start doing that shit to you guys though, like let us know. You know what I mean? Oh my God. Yeah. It's a so uh, anyway, nothing major going on. I, I, again, I want to draw some attention to the SPX because I do think this is what's going to steer the market here. And I've had this trend drawn out for some time. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were right here and I was talking about us potentially getting up to the 4100 to 4200 mark. And that's where this red box is marked. And you can see that we had another dip there. And then we did put, uh, eventually make it past this resistance, which we've cleared here now at the end of last week. So I do think that this could, you know, obviously going to retest this this line potentially. So maybe Monday, Tuesday is a little downturn, but you know, it's a good chance we're going to test this range of 41 to 42, like I was saying. And then I believe that another dump is coming to these financial markets. So. Um, I don't make a we're uh, going right through that relief rally that we were talking about. Yeah, and that's and that's totally what has happened. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, so this is not financial advice. We're not experts here, but we've been watching this for some time. We follow these charts quite a bit and what's going on with the economy. And this is just my personal view of, of what's gonna happen. It, you know, I don't uh, I don't expect anything going too far up <clears throat> for the next year. So or yeah, at least well, I mean, half a year. Yeah, so that's also it's getting really bad too, like just in the news and stuff and everything's getting like yeah. really, really, really bad. So it's like, yeah, how, how far are they going to push it is the question because yeah. eventually <laughs> it's just going to flip. Right. And yeah. when, once everybody is, is scared out of the market, that's when it's going to flip. That's what it flips. So it's like stuff like this makes me think like, how can it still be that far away? Like that second well, half that, that Bitcoin had to 15, five, we called that. I knew that was going to happen, traded it. Yeah. worked out perfect actually this range long right actually too, this though. this range and we you know we could potentially make some trading videos if you guys are interested i know marty trades on some of the shorter term time frames i'm a day trader personally so i trade this range so you know I, I i hit the bottoms i like to go long personally i'm just a fucking long guy i it, well right now is a good time to start having your more of your trades be I mean, long oh well, right? yeah and in the, but you can the, i was majority short for the last you year. can make a lot of money shorting though but when you make in money sh when you make money shorting some Somebody else is losing and getting hurt and i think that bitcoin was implemented to benefit people in the long run and i don't think satoshi was sitting around going oh fuck, people are gonna make a lot of money no, short but, but we do know people who are like yes, every other piece of, every other crypto the idea basically. is to be the change you want to see right? yeah, yeah exactly. so i'm not going to go around cutting people's throats just because other people are cutting people's throats yeah. that's kind of how i feel about that yeah. and i believe that if everyone buys bitcoin and goes long and You're has right. a dollar cost You're average right. strategy then that's how we all win and that's what this is all about is yeah. us having self-sovereignty right so 100%. um that's why i go long so that's what i play in these ranges so i played the long 17 2 to 18 2 way until we hit the bottom here took 15.5 back to 17.2 and then uh yeah you know 
like yeah, I said, yeah. I, now I, I trade these much for a bit. So. Yeah, I trade these long, so I've had one, two, three in this range, um, and I feel mm -hmm. good about that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Probably I mean, coming back to sixteen shorting, two but. again. Good chance. Yeah, good chance of sixteen two here. So uh, again, I think the SPX will retest this line so that you know, like you said, that's going to bring Bitcoin down to to sixteen two, sixteen k if it comes down there tomorrow. Uh, unless it just keeps for this run here. And, also, you know. also not a lot of uh, just stuff going on in general. We just right. had the, the midterm elections. They did a lot of manipulation and stuff before it. They're doing a little bit after because, of course, there's some stuff they can't say until after the election. So a little bit yeah. after. And now it's like it's going to be a holiday season, Christmas and stuff like that pretty soon. So like people are, people's attention is going to be drawn elsewhere very quickly here. And unless like something that you, you know, is drastic happens, that they, you know, we always, that's always in the back of our mind. Something's happened. Remember that the big earthquake we're supposed to get? That's going to happen one day too, right? So <laughs> yeah. anything's possible, of course. It's coming. But, you uh, know, some say that the, the prophecy of 2012 actually happened. And now it's just like some weird simulation. Oh, that's crazy. Right. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, another thing I want to draw attention to, this is the US dollar. So the DXY chart, this is the US dollar index, the strength of the US dollar. And you can see that it went way, way into the top of its range there and took a hard spike down over the last couple of days. So now this is the monthly chart. So each one of these candles represents a month in time. So this is actually showing a pretty large span. We're talking 22, 23 years here. On, on this chart that we're looking at. So I just want to show you, like, this is how the market steers and they go on these, you know, it's like almost, you know, five to 10 year cycles of how this market fluctuates and the time that they're making money and the time that they're taking their profits and putting it into the US dollar. And I believe that we're in one of those times where they have put all the money into the US dollar this year, we saw the markets crash at the end of last year. People were talking about this recession coming for next year. It's like we were in a recession all this year or a deflationary period when we slowed down money printing mm -hmm. or we stopped money printing. High this to me rates. is the deflationary period, which I was even talking about when we started this show a year ago. So mm -hmm. this is how it's played out. It's what's happened this year. They slowed money printing. They, they raised interest rates. The economy slows down. The U.S. dollar gets back up to it went to right. Per, yeah, put some purchasing power in back their into hand. the U.S. dollar, right? Yeah. Which they always will. Yeah, because they are trying to crush everything that opposes them, and you yeah. know, and Bitcoin and crypto innovation and all these things, blockchain and everything else, does oppose that. So we can see that they even made money in the 2020 run. They killed it. They crushed it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? They took tons of money, tons of profit in, in Bitcoin and crypto. Yeah, and then they absolutely crushed it. So they were able to purchase a shit ton of it and and, and purchase enough that they. Can push it down to these levels and mm -hmm. accumulate more at these lower prices mm -hmm. lower than it was at the top of the last high right mm -hmm. so we can see that it's manipulation in my opinion by watching things like the us dollar and the spx and what's going on in their in their mm -hmm. traditional finance markets because we know that they fully got their fingers into into bitcoin and crypto too so i'm watching this us dollar roll over and, and a hard spike down out of the rsi so this rsi you know it's got to reset so maybe it you know it's you know one of its cycles here like we had a little bit of a an actually mm -hmm. bullish divergence there but uh they can only push it so hard uh for so long and then you gotta have a bit of cool off right yeah or sorry the bearish divergence shows it right yeah. there before it came yeah. down again right and so almost and you've got it that's a continued bearish divergence too the, yeah in the whole that whole pattern yeah yeah exactly so and that's and it and like if you look at this in it in the the broader scheme it's like the u.s dollar is only going down 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 so it's all-time high was 1980 i think yeah at a dollar 63 and that was like we've just been making lower highs yeah and it's just been consistently losing its value since it's mm -hmm. it's all-time high at the end of whatever fucking war that was mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah uh so and that's what it's going to continue to do that's what it's going to continue to do that's how it works so let's go out to the monthly chart of bitcoin now that we're talking about that actually and we can kind of get an idea of how these work opposite so somebody asked me in one of our last videos there was a comment that we didn't answer and it was uh what's the difference between having something with an infinite supply cap and bitcoin having the the ability to be fractionalized into such a small amount which is a great question but the thing is, when it has a capped amount, it can only go up in value regardless of how small those fractions become at the end of its existence. So we're talking about the last Bitcoin being printed in 2130, right? So the amount that these small small purchases are going to make between now and then in these fractions, because we're only buying 
portions of a mm -hmm. of a bitcoin no one's like i'm not buying a bitcoin at a time you know what i mean so yeah, we might be soon <laughs> we might be soon but right now we're, we're we're buying small pieces right we're buying satoshi so that's where the fractions are coming in and when we get towards the end it's going to be so valuable you know what i mean yeah. like in in a hundred years from now yeah. 107 years from now when the last bitcoin is printed think about the value that it's going to hold yeah you know what i mean we're talking right now we've got a we got about 150 to 300 million wallet addresses or something like that yeah. you know what i mean and under 10 percent on of the of the population yeah, yeah. easily under 10 percent. Yeah. it's probably under five percent of the population right now. i think we went from about four to nine or something like this in the last during the run okay yeah, so during yeah. the last few years yeah, it's still so you know exactly it's happened it's happening quicker in the last yeah. bull run it was only up to three percent so yeah so, so you know the US the US dollar cycle. the US dollar having an infinite supply cap the more that they print the less valuable it becomes mm -hmm. but the more Bitcoin you print the more valuable it becomes because it has a true supply cap mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so this is so one day there will be that's it yeah that's it right so, so you have to figure it out right so, so anyway so it's coming so looking at the monthly chart uh, of Bitcoin here and you can see that uh, oh, I'm going to turn that brush off. You know, the US dollar, it's all it's done is go down in the monthly chart, right? Yeah. And this chart is only going up, right? And it's only going to continue to go up. Like even if it like if it there's no possible way it would ever get down to these lows of 1000 or 100 200 dollars where it was before. Like it's just not happening. You know, I think there's too much lost for it to ever get down that low. Yeah. You know, but even talking about we, we we will see it this average out a bit more. It's not going to be so parabolic, I don't think, in in cycles to come. No, because that's that's all they can do to keep the U.S. dollar afloat. But anyway, the reality is is they're going to do whatever it takes to slow anything down that opposes a threat, a threat against their course, power. Of course, right? Um, yeah. So the monthly chart. This is what kind of makes me feel safe. Still, you know, like the shorter time frame charts. Like I've got. You can see all these lines in there. Like they're all from the shorter time frame charts. But when you look at the monthly chart on a on a grander scheme, like you would look at any shorter time frame, like that's looking pretty good, to me. Yeah. Okay. Sure. We had it's a double, definitely a good buy in time. Yeah. Time it's like sure we had a sure we had a double top last year. But I mean, look where the next low is. It, like there's, if it goes down to four K, like. It's going to be crazy how fast it goes back up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying it's going to 4K. Like, I really don't believe that. But <clears throat> anyway. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's get off of the charts because we can get in there for hours. But uh, let's get on to some of these other things. So it, like skepticism around Bitcoin, cognitive dissonance, um, and what's holding people back. You have to share the conversation you had with us. Right. So, uh, well, I mean, it's the, it's the typical argument. So people saying, oh, well, you know, you're going to put all your, or cash is king. Cash is king is really the argument. So you're going to put all your money into something and then, you know, the power grid goes down or like these, you know, uh, like if yeah. they, if they have all digital currencies, what, do, what are people going to use to, to do non-traceable transactions? Bitcoin's traceable and people are all worried about that and everything yeah. else. Right. So, um, you know, the idea of cognitive dissonance, it's when we have two conflicting beliefs that make us feel uncomfortable with our own fucking emotions is really what it is. So if you like, and most of these people that I have these skepticism conversations with are people who are completely against the government and every single <laughs> aspect, yeah, except yeah, for yeah. their monetary they policy, everything. right? So it's like, to me, that's two conflicting beliefs. Like you don't trust the government. You don't think you, you they have your best interest at at heart yeah you so don't think a solution what's his but, yeah. but why do you trust their monetary policy the thing that keeps them going the thing that keeps them rich yeah, yeah, and yeah. keeps you fucked yeah, yeah why do you trust that but no other aspect of the government you know what i mean like that just doesn't make any well, sense well actually almost so, sounds des designed to be perfect really well yeah <laughs> <laughs> so this idea that cash is king it's like man that's what they want you to believe but we know that six thousand paper currencies have been in existence and not a single one of them has has succeeded and a lot yeah. of them have failed in the last yeah, two that's years that's a very very bold point very good point term so to, to know us dollar is going to be no different well, so and if, if it is digital currency yeah the 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 fiat currencies are designed to uh, to spark a spark an economy to get things going yes right to make you spend your money yeah. because if it's if it's gonna if your money is going to be worth more tomorrow you're not going to spend it so they want it to be worth less so that yeah. you spend it right the, the the saying is you need to spend money to make money and a lot of people take that the wrong way and yeah. you actually just need to buy things that well, hold like, 
asset value yeah and but against it, the dollar tra- because over time it will go down and traditional finance the way that the like basically currency instead of money came into play because money used to just be gold right yeah yeah like money well, and, gold, and so. but it's just not sustainable right so that we haven't we've got our our starter right now we need to have something that's sustainable for the long term because right. this we've, we've started we've got here economy right. is is built like and we, it was but it was all built on uh, the originally was built on IO, ious yeah so there was yeah. a stash house yes. for gold it's all IOUs. there was a stash house for gold and then you used to be able to go and give out a credit note that <clears throat> said you had access to this man of gold. So it's basically yeah, an yeah, IOU yeah. for your exchange. Because you don't right? want to you don't want to carry that gold around. And then heavy. the we'll hold on to it. Then the you. gold stash house, safe house, mm-hmm. would lend people funds against the gold, but the the loans were only fucking paper credit notes. Mm-hmm. And then they started mm-hmm. lending money that, that wasn't actually there. Right, so they didn't even right. have the And then they got into so a like, massive debt and they had to come off the gold standard. Yeah. And then and it just so, allowed them to print more because now we can do it's like the whole system was built on fraud yeah the whole thing yeah. and it's like so to to say that that you know oh you're worried about every fraud every argument boils else. down to the money system being the problem and it, it every really argument is. and so it's like i'm not saying bitcoin is going to take over the world and be the the new thing within the next few years but it's going to slowly erode the monetary policy yeah, and it's the, designed the to errors last. the errors that it has yeah and that and we're and we're gonna doings. see we're gonna see the ups and the downs we're gonna see you know blood in the streets occasionally oh, yeah. because it's it's figuring its stuff out you know all all assets that happens it's early yeah. it's very very early and so, eventually we're already seeing it start to mellow out so yeah so if the power grid goes out i, I think you'll have bigger problems than, yeah than exactly paper money. exactly <laughs> we either we either bitcoin <laughs> or barter <laughs> it's bitcoin yeah. or barter basically and so it's like if if we want to continue living the way we're living and moving forward as a, as a society a human race mm. then it's going to be bitcoin mm-hmm. so that's what you put your money into yeah. that's what and we plan uh, for to think that technology is not just going to continue to increase and we're just going to get more advanced like that to me is just seems crazy like if we if we all of a sudden have no power and we go back to living with no power like that just i don't know we have you know, there that has to be seems... some sort of astronomical asteroid hit or something just a like big that asteroid that. Hit. yeah, yeah, like yeah that's yeah. something like that to happen yeah so um, a reset i guess it could be a reset yeah <laughs> but depending I mean, on what you believe in for well, me, let's try this again for, for, for me <laughs> for me i'd rather believe in bitcoin because bitcoin it has so it has no issuer so there there is no yeah. person there is no personal emotion attached to bitcoin it just is it's there for the people who want to believe in it instead of the instead of the u.s dollar yeah and, the, and, and use it monetary and use it because we, we can right? use it yeah. You, you've bought things off me in Bitcoin. And, yeah, totally. Like, and that was the other thing. It, they go, right? oh, it's just a fake currency. And I say, well, for one, Bitcoin's not a currency, but it's, yeah. uh, it sure as hell makes me real currency on a, pretty yeah. much a daily basis. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and that's another thing too. It's, it's like, just because we all believe and agree on using it, right? So yeah. like, when you ask me if I can yeah. buy a hat off you for Bitcoin, I'm like, absolutely. Yeah, that, yeah. that works for me. That was this up. Yeah. <laughs> works works great. Uh, link in the comments if you want to get one yourself. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But uh, we all just sure, believe sure, in the United... Sure. They just have paper, right? You know, it's the same thing. Five bucks. Bucks. Here you go. This note says five on it. Yeah. Perfect. There you go. That's. I'll take that. It's just because we all agree, right? It works out. We all agree, and that's yeah. the same thing with everybody who's in the Bitcoin network. We all agree. And at least now and it's one, software on the blockchain. It's, one, it's you know it's stored in a way that we can all access and transparent and it, it makes sense, not mm-hmm. just in the cloud or in a bunker somewhere. Yeah. Or like what do we got in here? I don't really don't know. Just lend it out, lend it out, lend it out. It's all IOU anyway. It doesn't matter. And that's what the bank's been doing for fucking centuries. So exactly. it's like this thing with FTX is like, man, it's just like, it was exposed. It was exposed yeah. because it was on blockchain. So mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm grateful for that. And this to me is the best thing for crypto. So now yeah. we're going to bring it back down to realistic prices because 70,000 was crazy for yeah, something yeah, that's yeah. only been around for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And that's the other thing too. It's like, it is still, regardless of it coming down 85%, like it does in every cycle, it's still the best performing asset of the last decade. Mm-hmm. Right. So, mm-hmm. and I we'll mean, continue to just probably take over Bitcoin, the stock market. In Bitcoin general. doesn't care yeah. what you think of it. It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you know, it really doesn't. It's the first fucking piece of digital energy with no issue or that we can invest and you know what I mean that you know it's far superior to your paper fiat uh, yeah yeah well with that what do you think I think that's good Bigs and Mugs out Bigs and Mugs out peace, peace. oh, oh really oh wow I was about to start going oh boy wrap it up boy